Welcome to this week's sermon recap, or I should say sermon bonus. You're getting an extra uh, message, not only the Sunday sermon, but you're getting something added to it. Uh, Sunday we talked about this spiritual warfare again where Paul said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I talked about some of the social, socially accepted philosophies of today. People are influenced by them without even thinking. And I mentioned one, I mentioned transgenderism, but uh, I think about abortion and I think about how uh, when I grew up hunting, I was told one thing. When you're out hunting and you're sight, you, you know, you're, you're, you're sighting in with your rifle on the target, make sure it's a deer. Make sure. And if you're in doubt, don't shoot. And I think about the same way with abortion. If is it a life or not? That's really the question. And we don't even have that discussion. When does it become a life? Because I'm sure all of us, uh, all of us are in agreement. When that baby is born, uh, the mother doesn't have a right to kill it after it's born. But one day before, in some states, they say you can kill that baby. So that's really the argument. Is it a life or isn't it a life? I think that's where the argument should be about abortion. But how how does this happen? Because there are spiritual forces that are tempting us, that are promoting a philosophy in society that becomes generally accepted. And everybody, I mean, in this country at one time, it was socially accepted. It was accepted by the Supreme Court that black people are subhuman. They're not they're not as intelligent as white people. And that's totally from Satan. That's from the evil one that wants man to fight against man, to be hate, to be for classism and racism, that we, that we think because of the color of our skin or our education or our nationality, somehow we're better than other people. We're all the same. We're all created in the image of God. There's no difference. But how Satan does this is he works in our flesh, in the natural man. And this is why I said Sunday, we cannot fight the spiritual battle in the flesh. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We cannot fight this battle in the flesh. Now notice Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 says this, I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And this is why it is so important. Over and over again, in the New Testament and in Ephesians, it says, be filled with the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. Why? Because the flesh, your natural man, that is where Satan tempts us. That is where Satan wants to get us. Jesus, after he for fasted for 40 days... Satan came and tempted him. And what did Jesus say? As, is, as it is written, he used the word of God. As it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus used the word of God as a weapon against Satan's attack when he was in a, in, in a weak state. He had fasted 40 days and so this is, this is the area, if you will. This is the ground. This is the uh, battlefield, if you will. It's in our mind and in our flesh that Satan tempts us to hate people, to be aggravated with people. He's just, he, you notice what he says. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another so that you will not do the things that you wish. In other words, you want to do good, you want to live right, you want to love people, you want to forgive, you want to let go of bitterness, but you can't. Why? Because Satan works in the flesh. That is his battlefield. That's why the Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. He says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. In other words, God provokes us to love, to long-suffering, to patience, to walking in his word. And so as we think about this spiritual battle, I think Paul here in Ephesians chapter 6, 
he gave us a, a view of what's happening around us. He's given us an understanding that there are forces at work that we don't fully comprehend, see, or understand. However, the answer is still the same. Walk in the Spirit of God. Walk according to the will of God. We have victory. Jesus rose from the dead. Yes, there are evil forces, but he conquered death. He rose again, and the power of the resurrection is available to us as we live for Jesus. Next week, we're going to be talking about the armor. He says, therefore, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the plans of the devil. And he says, when you've taken up the whole armor of God, stand therefore by putting on, and we're going to get into that because God gives us the plan. Remember we said, we can win this battle because why? We have his might, we have his plan, and we know the enemy's strategies. Therefore, we can have victory. Don't forget, we have Bible study and teen Sunday at 7, and then service uh, Sunday at 10, 30. Also, after church, as a reminder, on Sunday, there will be a brief meeting for those interested in helping with the 4th of July parade. Have a great week. Looking forward to seeing you again Wednesday or Sunday or both. God bless.